and the evaluation bar changes ever so slightly. I would take this bishop with the knight. I want mm -hmm. a material imbalance. The c6 pawn is a long-term weakness. The knight on d5, it blockades the bishop. That's true, but it can't easily move because c6 is loose. That is a vulnerable pawn. Objectively speaking, white is playing without risk. Of course, black is the side with a knight, which means in a big time scramble, you want to watch out for knight forks. Knight f4, knight b4, 10 seconds for Gukesh, rook f6, active counterplay, rook d3, defending the bishop, and here comes the knight. It jumps around to b4. Maybe he'll even take the pawn on a2. That would be absolutely wild. <laughs> rook a3, Crazy. knight takes a2. But if you take that pawn a2, your knight is trapped, so the white king will slide over and the knight doesn't get out. He is retreating his knight, but Danya, the bar is creeping up in white's favor. I think it's time to bring the king into H5. the game. And he, he stops the check on the g-file first. Amazing Lovely move. move. Stopping rook g6, he's gonna go king g3 and stabilize the bishop. He's now up a healthy pawn. He can go king g3. Gukesh, using his knight though, knight e7. Knight f5 was threatened. Look at the way that Wei Yi is using his bishop. Gukesh is down to his last seconds. Wei Yi is close to winning this game. Rook f3, rook e5. Oh, rook f3 to e5. The knight is so badly placed on e7, it can't move anywhere. But that's a hard thing to spot. It's not a natural tactic. Rook to b4 is a good move. Now rook to a4. Stare at black's weak pawns. 10 seconds for Wei Yi. Now the time situation is equal. Gukesh... Four seconds on the clock. King moves up to f6. Wei Yi centralizes his own king, trying to make sure the d4 pawn is protected. And now he infiltrates to b8. Here we go. This is absolutely nerve-wracking for these players. Black is on the back foot. You're down a pawn. Your king is being checked. The rook is coming after all your weaknesses. But black is everything protected for now. For now, you can go king g7 to f6. Black has the luxury of going back and forth. Wei Yi is the side that has to figure something out. Do you trade on d5? Gukesh offering that trade. Wei Yi says, no, I like my bishop. The king slides over to b3. Feels like Wei Yi is making progress. Down comes the h pawn. He might try to trade it off for black's g pawn. h5 there was a tactic. What's going on here? The, the knight goes to d6 and bishop oh, to c6. He gives up move. his rook to get the other one and he saves his bishop. Look at all the tactics here. But black has nothing. Gukesh diving in with his rook, trying to generate counterplay. The rook moves over to the side. Rook to a3, hitting a2, bishop d5. Everything is defended. Wei Yi is winning. And the rook trade was unacceptable for black. That's why he keeps his rook on d7. The white king is in the line of fire. So white is winning. That's clear. But you need to be careful not to fall into any forks or checks. Absolutely. The king moves away from the pin. Now knight f5 is coming. This is still a little bit unpleasant. But rookie 6 check. Knight f5, rookie 6 is going to win. One second for Gukesh. And now here comes oh, the move. You can't take it because it's pinned. King f5, oh. bishop e6, and that's the clincher. That's the clincher. Oh, and you see it on Gukesh. He is, oh, he's broken, and he shakes Wei Yi's hand. Wei Yi is the 2024 Tata Steel Master. That knight was jumping around from side to side, and somehow Wei Yi was able to keep the knight confined, keep all of the business squares covered. And we can rewind. I don't know, a couple of moves. I'm honestly really impressed how Wei Yi was able to use his corner pawns, uh, not only to restrict the knight, but also to chip away at the key pawns in black's position. So h4, Robert, knight f5. I would ignore uh, the computer assessments. But first of all, finding bishop takes c6 here with no time on the clock, how gutsy is that? Incredible, because you are giving up your rook, which was attacked, but you're attacking your opponent's rook in return. And look at the accuracy for the whole game. Nearly 92% for Wei Yi, and I agree with that. It was an extremely well-played game. I hope to get 92% in a classical game, but he does it in blitz, and it wasn't just an end game where it's easy to make moves. Even this position, Danya, the rook on a3, it hits a2, it stares at f3, the rook on c6 pins that knight on d6, but as soon as the king moves out the way, the knight can jump around the squares like f5, the d4 pawn is loose. So to have the presence of mind to pin a knight on the 6th rank to save your bishop and then bring your other rook in, it's incredible to see unfold when you just have seconds. And then the final nail in the coffin rook to e8 using the pin against the knight and this isn't just a flashy move to to bleed some time off of black's clock he's actually threatening to infiltrate rook e6 this was the most clinical victory and after king f5 spotting the fork on e6 and a dejected gukesh had nothing to do but to resign he will lose at the very least a minor piece although after king f4 you could actually throw in the check on f8 and win an entire rook what a victory what technique by the Chinese Grandmaster, who also dispatched Noderbek Abdusatorov in the previous match in absolutely spectacular style with that attack against White's King in their second game.